and welcome to The Sherlock Show. I'm Charlotte Collins and joining me on the sofa today are Tor Cardona and Harriet Russell. Welcome ladies. Uh, we're all very excited that Hamilton is launching on streaming service Disney Plus tomorrow. We'll be discussing that and our favourite online live performances and reflecting on our favourite summer events. Toria Smith and Catherine Callahan, founders of Grazing Table Sensations Grape and Fig, are here to tell us about their success and show us how to make a seriously delicious grazing platter ideal for entertaining over the next few months. Uh, Lou and I are also doing an and other stories unboxing, so expect some stylish new season purchases. Plus, the second instalment of Tours wellness series is here she'll be talking you through the best supplements to help you with a hangover i think we could all do with that um, also a big shout out to daisy our lovely team member who is out of action for the next few weeks but we are excited to have you back um but first we've got to talk about hamilton i think i'm disproportionately excited <laughs> for this it's it's launching on streaming service streaming service disney plus um which is pretty amazing given how expensive and lucrative those tickets are right yeah and the fact that it wasn't supposed to drop on disney plus until october 2021 is that right yeah ah. but they accelerated the release because of the coronavirus pandemic and I, the new people were at home i'm surprised they would even that it would even have been in the pipeline pre-corona because surely that massively affects ticket sales well the, the performance that they're actually going to stream is actually from 2016. So the performance has sort of been in the can, as it were, for mm -hmm. quite a long time. I think they were probably just waiting for the right sort of deal commercially to be yeah. able to put it on which service and when. <laughs> to be fair, I'm being really stupid because I'm guessing Disney paid them quite a lot of money, so that makes up for the lost tickets. True. <laughs> yeah. and, and Charlotte, as such a Hamilton fan, how do you feel about watching it? in that environment, like in a very different context. Yeah, I'm buzzing because yeah. I've, so I've seen it, I saw it on the stage and tickets are so expensive. So if you want to go back and see it, then that's like, you know, it's quite an indulgence to go and see it a second time. Yeah. Um, so fun. I'm going to watch it a third, fourth and fifth. It's yeah. fantastic. I can't wait. Um, but obviously it got us thinking about musicals. What have we, have you guys been able to enjoy? Have you tried enjoying all the stuff that has been available to stream that otherwise wouldn't all the theatre productions over COVID? Harriet? I've tried. I The first sort of um, national theatre broadcast, which they've done every week since, but the first one was One Man, Two Governors, which was obviously a smash hit with James Corden. And I never saw the original one, so I was really, really happy that they did it. And I really enjoyed it. But then I tried a couple of the others, and for me, some of them just really didn't work. For, for example, one of them was Streetcar Named Desire with... Gillian Anderson and Vanessa Kirby in from the Old Vic and the original staging was done in the round mm -hmm. so I felt like the camera was like constantly having to rove around them and the sort of effect of it was, was lost kind of lost yeah. Yeah. Um, so I didn't enjoy it I turned it off um, a couple of ballet things I've tried it's again I, I don't know what it is it just doesn't hold your attention mm. maybe it's because you're in your home and you've got your phone and all yeah. the rest of it um, it, yeah, and maybe because you haven't paid for a amazing. ticket as well <laughs> yeah, you're not obligated yeah. to be invested. Yeah, yeah true. true. You're not yeah. invested on, on yeah. that level. So. Tour, have you tried? I had all the intentions to. Like mm. when the when the NT live started, I put them in my calendar. I was like, yeah, well, my yeah. two governors, Frankenstein, and didn't watch any of them. Yeah, <laughs> I tried one, my two governors, having seen quite a few. And so I had seen that streetcar version and Frankenstein, both from the cinema through mm -hmm. NT live. Tried one, my two governors, and again, I switched it off. I cannot. That a cinema at least is kind of sort of replicates the theatre experience, mm -hmm. whereas sitting on your sofa with your phone. It's just really hard to focus. Really hard to yeah. Say, is it? yeah. Um, Shame. This also got us thinking about our favourite musicals, things that we're excited to see again, whether they be on TV and accessible now or once theatres, please God, reopen. Harriet, you're a big musical fan. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> all right or not? Well, playing no, down. <laughs> I am a musical fan, um, but I'm I'm still very picky. So um, certain ones. I think we were talking before the broadcast that Wicked is one of my favourites but I don't actually sort of love the musical in itself because the story to me is a bit silly and what have it's you but the silly. music mm. I think is so good and I would happily because I now know the story I'd happily listen to the soundtrack yeah. over and over um Anything Goes is another one where I just love the music Old couldn't school. care less about the story like yeah. whatever so for me I think I gravitate more towards good music rather than necessarily like the whole thing I think that's fair mm. tour into musicals um, I'm more into musical films as opposed to musicals on the stage. I, I find them a little bit forced. It's like, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a lovely day. Suddenly let's break into songs. It's a lovely <laughs> yeah. day. But like, yeah, I'm, Mamma Mia is a big one for me. The Apps, film? Yeah, the film. Oh, I have, I have seen film. the stage, but like yeah. the film is just so... Have you seen the second one? Because oh, that's yeah. just dropped on Netflix. Are you guys, that is the worst film ever made. I, no, like, it's the best. Are it's, you joking? Mamma Mia so too. good. Ooh. The first Mamma Mia I cannot bear. 
Hang- really? <laughs> so you prefer Mamma Mia 2, the yep. film, to Mamma Mia? I, cry- I went to the cinema to see Mamma Mia 2 three times and I cried every single time. That is fascinating. Harry, I normally really rate your taste and I'm so <laughs> fascinated by that. Tor, and you love 2 as well? Yeah. Did you not find it quite emotional? No, that was basically for Please comment in the comment section below. I would love <laughs> to know who's Mia right about divide. this. The big Mamma Mia debate. That is fascinating. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was the biggest load of crap. <laughs> She's so bad. Um, but, you know, each to their own. Love her. Um, okay, let's move on and talk about uh, summer events. Wimbledon should have obviously started this week. Um, and lots of things have inevitably been cancelled over the coming months. Harriet, you are a really big Wimbledon fan, aren't you? Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a real shame, actually. It's a real shame. It? I think one of the first shows back, we were sort of doing our highs and lows of of lockdown and when Wimbledon, Wimbledon got cancelled that was a that was a bit of a blow for me it was inevitable you know and there course, are, would, you, yeah. would you have gone this year would you would you go I, I do tend to go most years actually either you know through various sort of wiling my way in there um, <laughs> whether it be public ballot last year I was so lucky I had a corporate invite in my last job and I got to see Rafa and Federer play each oh other in a, a quarter final um, which was amazing because that might be one of the last times they 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 mm. meet. So um, yeah, I love it, and I'm really sad to see it go. But you know, there are much more serious things going on, and sure. it will it will come back. That is a shame. Tor lamenting the loss of Wimbledon. Yeah, not not really actually. No, no. Not I, I have been a few times. I love it when I'm there, mm. um, but I'm not the kind of person who sits at home and is so glued to it on the TV. Fair. I think to me it really marks summer. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like Wimbledon. Definitely. That's it's the end of exams. Like, yeah. It, yeah, it's just it feels really like that's the beginning. So that's a shame. Um, the Olympics as well, obviously, has been cancelled. That is also. Yeah, I feel that was cancelled quite a while ago. It still should have been well, this summer. Yeah, it was inevitable, wasn't it? I mean, yeah. they can't have those crowds. They can't have that sort of travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was bound to happen. They've obviously just moved it to 2021. But and I think it's crossed about that. I know. Yeah. That sounds a bit ambitious, doesn't it, at the moment? What are the things that you are missing? Tor, if it's not Wimbledon, what about summer is, is kind of currently absent for you? For me, it's the spontaneity of just being able to have fun and just do fun things. Mm-hmm. And even now, I feel we just can't plan for anything. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really struggling with that, I think. It's going to be a very different summer on the, on the horizon. It will be really interesting with obviously the pubs and the bars and stuff opening this weekend. But I just don't think it's... I, I'm not going to go. No. It sounds so stressful. Know, it mm. does sound stressful. You need a lot of apps and... Yeah. I know. I'd like to see what it's like this weekend and then make up my mind. Yeah. Um, yesterday, we... I was going to say celebrated. I don't think that's the right word. We marked 100 days of lockdown. It's officially been... 100 dates uh, here in the UK. So uh, the BBC uh, to market is doing a campaign to get people talking about the major changes that have happened in their lives over lockdown. It's been a pretty seismic 100 days. Um, So what is the thing for you guys that you don't want to go back to doing? The things that, you know, obviously our lives have massively changed, but how has that kind of changed for the better for you? I think for me, it's definitely just being in touch with people. I think Prior to this whole crisis, I was definitely the person who would sort of see WhatsApps or whatever come through on my phone. I think just deal with that later. Um, but obviously, all of this time at home, you're you're constantly talking to people online or through Zoom or whatever. And I'd like to try and keep that up as much as possible. I feel like I've connected with friends and family that, in a way, that I would not have mm. before. Um, and also that whole sort of um, psychology of whenever someone used to ask me before like how I'd been and stuff I'd be like oh I'm so busy I'm so tired I'm so stressed I really don't want to go back to being sort of that negative person because if I'm busy and tired and stressed it must mean that there's not a global pandemic <laughs> <laughs> it um, means that everything is normal again yeah, yeah and that yeah. I'm free yeah. so um, I'm going to try very hard to be in that sort of grateful space as much as possible okay I like that I like that yeah. too yeah Tor what about you yeah same with family and friends it makes me sound like a really terrible person that I wasn't I didn't make an effort before. Well, I think we're all no, I think, that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I think it's made me just really want to prioritise them so much. Mm. I think it's my birthday in a couple of weeks and I am just, usually I would be out with my friends, but I'm just dying to spend it with my family mm. and yeah. just be with them. And, mm. and I really hope I kind of continue that and yeah. continue to make an effort, as you say, Harriet. Do you, do you, people are talking about the social pressures of Zoom and actually how, how isolation has made it kind of, people feel even busier and feel more kind of obligated. Obviously, you guys don't feel like that. It's just been a bit of a lifeline, right? It has been a lifeline, but I can empathise with the whole feeling under pressure because, of course, people know that you're not busy. Yeah, it's really so, hard to leave, isn't it? Yeah. Like, OK, I've got to go. Yeah, Bye. Why? Yeah. Um, and if you, if you don't pick up the phone, they're, they're sort of saying, you know, I know you're there. Mm. Pick up the phone. So I, I can understand where people are coming from. 
But I think actually that is what's forced me out of yeah. the whole, I'll just deal with that later syndrome. Mm. Yes. And also when my phone rings, I'm like, oh, I really can't bother to talk to that person. And when I do, I'm in such a good mood. Oh, and yeah. so I'm so true. glad I did. It really lifts my spirits yeah, as well. It's so true. It's so important, isn't it? Mm. Um, all right. Finally, uh, this is a complete change of subject, but we thought we'd talk about fashion waiting lists. Um, Dior and Air Jordans uh, teamed up and launched um, a shoe which uh, is going to be available in a prize draw, right? Well, how's it working, Harriet? The, the way I understand it, and I am no fashion person, but <laughs> the way I understand it is that basically there was a waiting list for this shoe. And in the end, because I guess of coronavirus or something, they decided to do a prize draw, which was drawn yesterday for people from that list and their names are essentially picked out of a virtual hat and they're allowed to have these Air Jordans. And I just think, given the climate we're living in and the time that we're in, there's, I'm, you know, I'm all for fashion being this kind of like release and bit of spontaneity, bit of fun. Escapism. And then there's consumerism gone mad. And I feel like that sort of sits in, in that camp. You agree, don't you? I see, yeah, I completely agree. Is there not an <laughs> argument for it being kind of, you know, fashion is a part of culture it's an art form this is obviously a collaboration between two kind of particular you know, one major fashion house that has a kind of a real like backbone and heritage and so you know and on obviously a kind of more like hype beastie uh, product is there not an argument for people are getting their hands on a piece of history a piece of art a piece of culture can you see it from that perspective totally and i think if, if times were normal i wouldn't have nearly the issue with yeah, it yeah fair I enough do. i agree with you it's a bit um, distasteful just at the moment yeah. i just feel like maybe they you know Who's who's gonna wear the Dior Air Jordan? Like, no one. Where are they going? Instagram. You know? People love a shoe gram. <laughs> yeah. um, Tor, I'm gonna call you out on a bit of hypocrisy. I knew, I knew you were gonna say this. <laughs> because you sat here a mere two weeks ago and talked about um, desperately going onto H and M for the Desmond and Dempsey collab. Can I say why? Go for it. Defend. So yourself. that was actually the first weightless I've ever, well, not weightless, the first one I've ever like mm. got in a queue for something. That was because I love Desmond, Desmond, Desmond and Dempsey prints, but they're so expensive, and I knew that was gonna be like a cut price. Sure. I'm not signing up to get a £2,000 pair of trainers. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like signing up for a bargain for style. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, so that is the only time that I have ever like obsessed. I would never go and like stand in a queue, but obviously the wonders of the internet. Um, I remember when H&M did their collaboration with Isabel Morant. I remember being in the library at uni and getting all my friends to get in that queue. And I, and I remember purchasing, I, I managed to get a jacket, but I did it through someone else's computer who like managed to get through. Um, but I agree with you. It's because I could never have afforded an Isabel Morant Yeah, that, 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 that was my justification yeah, for that. Fair enough. Harriet, have you ever... <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm similar. I've never joined a wait list or anything. We're very lucky here at SL to kind of get a bit of an advance warning Intel. on the DL <laughs> on certain things. So I'm always quite organised with that. But I suppose the only one that I really recently was really excited about was the Superga Love Shack, Love Shack Fantasy oh, Collab. Yeah. So good. Um, which I managed to get on the first day through Revolve. I, did you get some? I got some. Oh, yeah, you say that. These guys though. busy saying that they don't believe in fashion hype. <laughs> you say, oh, you got some. But I, I was like manically doing it online. When loads left. <laughs> Loads. Yeah, I think you can still get them today. <laughs> they are really fun. They're, they're Lenny Kelly's for adults. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm into it. Um, all right, thanks both. Uh, next up, we are back with the brains behind Grape and Fig for their tips on perfecting the food trend sweeping the nation, grazing platters. But first, Tora's here with her favourite supplements to assist a hangover. Hi, I'm Tor. I'm Sheer Lux's wellness editor, and welcome back to my supplement series. Today I'm going to talk to you about the products and supplements that can help ease a bit of a sore head and a hangover. Now that rosé season is in full swing, I think it's my duty to tell you about the products I rely on to help me get through a hangover. First up, I'm going to talk about Gabriella Peacock's Clean Me. I am such a huge fan of Gabriella Peacock's GP Nutrition range and this Clean Me is a really, really good product. They're also really well priced, I think, um, for the quality and the ingredients they contain. So I'll show you what you get here. You get a kind of pack of three capsules and a drink. This is a seven day pack and I recommend taking this kind of a few days before you've got a big event or a holiday or that kind of thing and possibly for a few days after as well. Um, the capsules contain lots of liver loving ingredients, antioxidants that just help kind of keep everything ticking over uh, and this drink contains wheatgrass. Now wheatgrass is known for tasting not very nice but this is a really uh, nice green apple flavour and makes it taste 
actually really, really good. So this drink and capsule combination might not look like very much, but it really, really help give your liver a bit of love and also protect against free radicals, which we all know is really important. So I would definitely, definitely recommend this one. So I'm now gonna talk about milk thistle, which is another one of my favorites. And I have this one here from the organic pharmacy, which is a milk thistle tincture. Um, so you add this one to water and then just sip it throughout the day. I think you need about 10, or 15 drops per kind of large glass of water. So if you don't like taking capsules, this is one to try. It has got quite a bitter flavor, but I quite like that clean cleansing taste um, on a hangover. Um, this is really good. Milk thistle is a herb that has been proven to regenerate the liver and it's a really, really strong antioxidant. So it's all natural and definitely worth a try. So I'm now gonna talk about vitamin B. So when you drink alcohol, alcohol actually depletes your body of vitamin B and really just brings it down to a really, really low level. So taking a vitamin B, Supplement, while no means an overnight fix, can definitely be a really good thing to take in the summer or in the run up to a holiday or when you know you're gonna be drinking a little bit more. So this one is from Nature's Plus, which I really, really love as a brand. They have some really interesting formulas um, and this is their B Complex. Now, when looking for a B vitamin, I would probably look for a B Complex because you have all the B vitamins there in, in one capsule. So yeah, this is their Source of Life Garden B Complex. So one of the reasons why you feel so terrible when you're hungover is dehydration and this is my absolute hero when it comes to replacing electrolytes and yeah, hydrating the body after a, after a big night out. This is from Rejuvenated, which is a brand I always give a lot of love to, but I really think they're making quite cool formulas and they're also really, really well priced. So they come in these little sachets, which you just add to water, a bit like a diarolite, but much smarter and taste much, much better. Um, so as well as a lot of electrolytes to replace all those lost fluids, it contains vitamin C, calcium, and also resveratrol and hyaluronic acid, which can help to give your skin a bit of a boost. So if you are drinking and hungover and are worried about your skin, this is definitely a good one to try. So that's it from me, guys. Thanks for watching. And as always, if you have any ideas about things or supplements you want me to talk about, please, please let me know. Hope to see you all soon. Chances are you've seen lustworthy grazing platters all over Instagram of late, and we have my next guest to thank for the trend. Ideal for entertaining, beautifully arranged tables filled with an abundance of food have become the stylish new way to present party food, picnics, and more. And founders of Grape and Fig, sisters Toria and Catherine, are here to show us how to recreate their famous versions at home. So thank you really so much for being Hello. here. Hello. I, I don't think you understand the excitement that has been going on We're in so anticipation. We're so excited. Um, <laughs> so excited. Are you? Oh, good. Yeah. Um, so tell us a bit, grazing classes, for those who don't know, yes. um, where did the idea come from? What exactly are they? So I saw it in Australia back in 2013. Um, it was a trend that was going on there for about four years prior. I'm so ahead of the curve there. So ahead of the curve. Yeah. All kind of avocado, brunch, yeah. artisan coffee, it's all awesome that stuff. There. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then then three, three years later, I was getting married, wanted it for my wedding, um, and did it myself, basically, because there was no caterers out there at the time that kind of got the aesthetic struggle. Yeah. It was yeah. one of your biggest things, wasn't it? it the was. food. Just, like the food. Yeah, yeah And you wanted it to look a certain way, and yeah. no one was yeah, doing that. Yeah, exactly. This kind of, you know, really packed, gorgeous, full, full look. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, it was a kind of a hobby for six months, and then started the business 2017, and here, here we are. are. <laughs> <laughs> here you are today, all of this. Um, so what exactly is a grazing table? Obviously, we know what it looks like. It's yes. jam-packed, loads of food, but can you can you basically use anything? What what are the core so things to know? The kind of core products that we use, it's kind of based around cheese and charcuterie, really, mm -hmm. and lots of antipasti, anti yeah. breads, dips, just gorgeous grazing crackers. food, mm -hmm. crackers, chutneys. Um, pesto, we love pesto. Yeah, love pesto. So you yeah. can, because I was about to say, oh, those are all things that are kind of solid-ish, but you can just, no. you can throw in sauces, everything. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Yeah. And what we've done, what we're going to show you today is a platter, which is essentially a grazing table um, it, on a, a much smaller scale. Okay, yes. great. So let's get started. Yes. So platter, you guys have had to do a bit of a kind of 180 like everybody during COVID yeah. and you're doing platters now, I guess, more than entertaining. We are, yes. we are. And yeah. so what we've done is at the beginning of the year, we started a, a method mm -hmm. basically. So it's a method that we've been using for years um, and we wanted to make it really, really fun and really, really easy for people to do this at home. So we've created a six step method that's super, super easy. We'll be taking you through today. So step one is fan it out. So what we've made sure is the method method that we've created isn't based on produce, mm -hmm. it's based on styling. Perfect. Yeah. So if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, you can swap out the products okay. if you're not, you know, you if you're not keen on... You can use anything, basically. Anything. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. And 
presumably you could do it with, with all sweet stuff. You could do a dessert, it doesn't have to be. We, yeah. We've done meringue ones, Ooh. we've done, um, we do crudite, yeah. vegan. So what, so the step one is mm -hmm. fan, fan it out. out. So, so yes. we usually do this with our cheeses. So as you can see, Catherine there, mm -hmm. instead yeah. of just kind <laughs> of getting a block of brie and just popping it down, mm -hmm. to make the board look more inviting and to create more structure, we take our brie mm -hmm. um, and we cut it into mini wedges and then off of the edge, we create a fan. So it, off of the edge, presumably to make it feel a bit more kind of rustic, thrown yes, together, relaxed. Absolutely. Okay, we should say quickly as well, that obviously when you guys do this, you know, for catering purposes, you're gloved Gloves, up, your hair netted yeah, up. Absolutely. Um, Make sure you wash your hands. Exactly. All right. But this is just a demo, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Um, so we're okay. going to do this with our brie. Mm -hmm. So on two opposite edges, and we could leave it like that. We maybe do one more edge. And it, does that work particularly well because you can kind of create that fan-like shape, like brie is a good yes, thing to start exactly. with. Exactly. Yeah. And I think when you've got guests coming round, it kind of you've done one of the steps for them. It's a little mm -hmm. bit easier for them to kind of dig yeah, in, so you know? You can, like pick up a hunk of brie. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, it is. Exactly. It's so ready to eat almost, isn't it? That's the good exactly. beauty of it. So we could do one more fan and then we're gonna get our stilton, which we've got here as well. And we're gonna do a little fan with that on another edge. Now, when we go to the second step, mm -hmm. this will make a little bit more sense. Yeah. Because you kind of want to structure your board from the outside in. Okay. Uh, but we'll talk through that. Because that's second. how you build that abundance, right, as well. And yeah. it's how you kind of, so we can do one corner there. It's kind it's of how you, fan. just on the corner there. So um, it's just how you structure the platter. So that's step one, fan it out. Okay. Step two is edge it up. Mm -hmm. So yes. one of the key things, one of the key problems that people have when creating a platter is when you've got loose items like blueberries or olives they or roll. any yes. wet like items like mm -hmm. sun-dried tomatoes we're not using them today but if you kind of pop them on the edge the second you lift that platter to kind of give to your guests things are going to fall off sure you've got no structure so what we do is we like to create an edge around, around. the circumference of the platter um, and that kind of holds all of the gorgeous okay. stuff inside. We build a use a couple basically. of things, don't we? So we do use um, our uh, ham as well as our orange as well. So okay. it gives it a different look as it goes around. Yeah. You can do this with cucumber. Basically, yeah. anything that will wall Any, it in. Anything that's circular. Mm -hmm. And sharp edge. And that you can cut in half so that sharp edge. So you're literally going to, it's super, super simple. Got it. Just edge that up. It just creates that <laughs> little barrier. And what is the most popular thing? What, what are people going for the most? In terms of our platters, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's so definitely the cheese yeah, charcuterie. Cheese charcuterie. Yeah. It's, it's cheese kind of our, yeah. it's our best seller. Um, but we do just cheese, we do just charcuterie, as we do desserts. Crudite, crudite is lovely yeah. as well, yeah. That's yeah. really nice, nice. Well. very bright. Um, we're at the moment we're designing a cheese vegan platter. So yeah. if you're vegan, okay. you can enjoy all of the, the gorgeous stuff. But yeah. It's obviously all vegan cheeses. And, and have trends changed? Like, obviously, when you started, there was a lot of that charcuterie, but are there kind of new emerging grazing? Plate Do you know trends. what? There's there's so many different things coming from Australia, like salad platters. Okay. So like yeah. structuring cool. a Caesar salad, yeah. for example, love that. in a really that looks gorgeous way. So everyone gets their plate and then takes elements they want to enjoy. Nice. Um, but yes. We always say you you do eat with your eyes. I think yeah. that's why it's yeah. so good, isn't it? So this just looks so appealing totally. and it tastes just as good as well. So yeah. it's just hundred percent the dream, isn't it? So that's step two. Okay. Um, Number three. And then step three is pile it on. So mm -hmm. what you've got, you've got your structure, you've got your fans. It's looking good. But what you want to now is create piles of produce inside, inside mm -hmm. of the platter to create some structure yeah. basically so we've got some gorgeous goat cheese here we can add that there um, maybe one more on here and presumably the lack of symmetry is also key to it looking Absolutely. good right things in threes work mm -hmm. well so the eye works well with three so for example three piles of brie there works pretty well it's like flower arranging okay. yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. got it um so we've got some piles of goat's cheese and then what we do with our meats once again you know if you have um some gorgeous charcuterie just popping it down a platter like that doesn't Isn't really do work. it justice no. so what we like to do is we like to make little florets mm -hmm. so if you get your salami you fold it in half fold it in half again and you simply want to do as many as those as you can we love this. It looks like a lovely flower. It does look it like does a well. neat we flower. Absolutely. We always say, like, what's our favourite part in doing this? And I just find this so therapeutic. <laughs> Anyone doing this at nice home? Result. That's another thing, I guess. Like, it's so lovely. Meat, it is really therapeutic. Yeah, do. sure. If you get a glass of wine, come away from your mobile, just kind of create something that is enjoy. The process is so enjoyable. And how look, can you build them and then put them in the fridge overnight? Like, yes. will yes. they will they hold up and they will. look good? They will. Okay. Things like the the last step that we'll show you, mm -hmm. all of the um, like the figs and the strawberries. Yeah. It's best to add those right at the last yeah. minute when you're about to serve. But this main structure here, absolutely, you can create it, pop it in the fridge. 
and then it's just a ready-made you know, ready platter for when your guests turn up. You can just pop it out of the fridge an hour before you want to enjoy. Sure. Um, and and that is why done. we did this size, wasn't it? Because it, it can go into the it's fridge. Really, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Before we had a much bigger board and we were thinking that doesn't work sometimes for our clients when they buy them and they want to pop them in the fridge and have it like a couple of hours of later. Of course, or if you're going on a picnic yes, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It works so much better for them. So as you can see here, we're just adding these piles of kind of charcuterie. Mm -hmm. in, and one of the key bits here is try and keep your areas kind of together mm -hmm. so there's kind of a really we we're talking about this one there's a yeah. really thin line fine line between just dropping loads of stuff on a platter <laughs> and structuring it so sure. it looks you don't want it to look like you've just no. of ingredients exactly on. so at this stage try and keep your produce in dis distinct in sections. areas yes. Got yeah. it. exactly is there anything that really doesn't work like if you heard you know particularly creamy cheeses or something that just really goes wrong on a platter uh, too short things like hummus people love hummus mm -hmm. so things like that we would say okay if you enjoy that have it on the side, have it on the side. Yeah. yeah because don't put it it's in not it's not that aesthetically no. pleasing could you know i think hummus. it would just yeah that yeah. would definitely um probably not last no yeah. got it got it yeah. yeah so it's coming together you can kind of see it building mm -hmm. and then we're gonna get some gorgeous parma ham maybe add it in there i think that's all good for the Yes. And then we're going to add some dried apricots as well. Okay. Oh, yeah. Just this is all still part of the pile it on. This is pile the pile it on. Got it. Okay. So essentially what you want to do is you want to create, as I said, these mini mountains, and then you've got areas, like pools around that you can kind of fill it in, cool. which is the next step. And presumably you want to fill it in with the prettiest things you can find, right? Yes. That's what adds the, the glamour. Well, yes, but also things like the olives that mm -hmm. are um, loose. Sure. You don't really want to be adding those to the edge, as I said. So what you've got is you've got areas that are contained. Mm -hmm. So that's where... They fit in the pockets. And you can yeah. have a little bit more fun now. Kind sure. of the structure's done, and then you can add the bits of olives in. So what I'll do is I'll take some of like these. Oh, those are the best, those olives. And what's the best... Obviously, you know, everyone's seen photos, you can have these for, like, metres long. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's the most amazing thing you've ever done? I think we've done, like, a 20 metre for Facebook, oh haven't we? That was mental. We just had everyone. We had... Everyone so us. far. Yeah, no. and it was just a banquet, wasn't it? Yes. It was amazing. beautiful. It was, and it all went. You wouldn't believe it. No, literally. And if you wanted to do it for a wedding, like, what are your tips? How do you kind of have a, a wedding dinner that kind of works around that structure? Don't do it yourself, like me. Sure, okay, <laughs> tip number one. Book us. <laughs> yeah. Book us, hey. number two. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we would, yeah. I, I'd say with, with grazing tables and platters, with allergies, with dietary requirements, you know, you, you're, you know, we don't do any grazing platters, really, or tables where there is not a requirement. Sure, no. So yeah. with a grazing table... Um, all platters, just make sure that you create sections, so a vegan mm -hmm. section, an up-free section. Um, and that they're clearly marked That out, they're clearly presumably. marked yeah. so that your, your guests feel really comfortable. Yeah, makes um, sense. So what, you're doing, what we're doing here is we're essentially um, filling in those gaps. It's literally so as simple as that. Okay, so this is step four, fill it in. This is step four, Got it. fill it yeah. in. If you've created, you know, you've popped these bits of orange down, mm -hmm. don't worry about going on top of those. Yeah, that's, that's just fun. kind of the base. Sure. So having layers is... Um, is, is, is perfect. So we're going to do that with the olives. And using two different types of olives as yeah. well. Yeah, it's really nice. It's got the contrast of the big uh, with the small. So that's all. It looks lovely as well. And do you better. want, are you going for like, you know, the more colours, the better as well? Yes. Yeah. Different shades. Yeah. It does look good. Do you, uh, you guys were telling us about flowers before and how it can be pretty per perilous, perilous? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bad. So, yeah. So you, you've got to make sure, we, with lots of our grazing tables and our platters, we add, um, we add, like eucalyptus mm. or olive leaves to kind of garnish at the end or kind of create a little tablescape sure. which is gorgeous but you just need to be careful if you're using blooms mm -hmm. um, that they're food safe yeah. yes. so some flowers can be poisonous and if you pop them in the middle of the platter it's just oh, like no. yeah. far <laughs> from ideal so we can add some blueberries as well yes. and we're, so we're still in the fill it in stage at the moment and presume I mean people might think it's funny to kind of be mixing the sweet the savoury but you guys just think anything no, goes right it does it, it does and we do have some clients who say to us okay we don't really want things like fruit um, mm -hmm. with the kind of a the cheese charcuterie, mm -hmm. but that's absolutely fine. We mm. can then create two platters for them. I, th I think the beauty of kind of grape and figures, we are so bespoke. Mm -hmm. So whatever anyone wants, we, we'll we, we, we can do. Um, and there's a lot of copiers out there, aren't they? But you guys are the OG <laughs> platter makers. We like to you think are. so. You are. <laughs> we all know it. We, yeah. No, <laughs> do you know what? There's, there's some, um, some grazing companies out there, and we're really good friends with them, and we mm -hmm. kind of... You know, there's only so much we can do. And we kind of give them our business sure. it's when we can't do it. And it's really, lovely. Yeah. It's really yeah. lovely. And we're Let's a really nice communi community. Mm -hmm. um, it can be a bit of a struggle when <laughs> we launch something and it's 
someone's kind of copying it the next day. But it's you know right. what? I think that's all part of it. Exactly. Right. Next stage is make now it pop. Make it pop. <laughs> this is. We, we fight stage. over this stage. <laughs> Why do you fight? Because it's just such a lovely... Because I think it's it the all, fun bit. Yeah, because okay. right now it's a, it's a full ball. But mm. when you do put these elements on, it really does... It does it pop, pops, doesn't it? Yeah. It does pop. <laughs> it does exactly what we say it did. So we, um, we do love this stage. So what we're going to do, we're going to add <laughs> some honeycomb first. Oh. Okay, so this is Didn't fresh know about honeycomb. honeycomb. Mm -hmm. oh, it's it absolutely the incredible. And it's perfect on the brie. Oh, um, the combination is just incredible. It's so we're going to add it just next to the... Okay, this is the most mouth water. This is torturous, I know. isn't it? I put this in the as well. Yeah, some more. <laughs> and don't worry, like, even treat. though you're doing it in the, the, the methods, in the stages, if you kind of see little gaps, just add... Keep filling. Just keep yeah. filling and just make it perfect. There's no... Obviously, we're in a bit of a rush here. <laughs> uh, but, you know, if you're doing this at home, just kind of add, add bits and pieces. So I can see here, like, the eye. It would look quite nice having some orange there. And is there such a thing as too much? There is. Okay. We were talking, about this, we were talking about this, yeah. You don't want to overload it too much because sure. it can then, there's a fine line between it looking like a piece of art yeah. and then and suddenly messy. everything's just gone on top and you can't see it. So, so right now it's beautiful, but it when is. we do add the strawberries, uh, the figs and things, it will make it pop, but doing too many of that, yeah. it could go the wrong so way. Nice. So. so we're going to... Literally on top of the honeycomb, we're going to sprinkle some pistachios. Mm -hmm. Yes, we and love it. Just looks this. stunning. We're just going to add some radishes and some strawberries, not too much. Some edible flowers here. It literally looks amazing. Are oh. just incredible. And you could kind of use this as a hack for using up bits in your fridge, right? Like, yes. it's quite. It's a great way to if you've got people coming over, if you don't want to kind of cook a whole meal or whatever, to just use what you've got, right? Yes. Absolutely. We started this at the beginning of lockdown. We actually did that something. That was brilliant, wasn't was it? it? Ready, set. Ready, set, platter, but That's use it. whatever you've got in your oh, fridge. Because not a lot of people wanted to go to the supermarket. Sure. So we thought, actually, let's create at home. And um, that worked really well. So everyone's that. looked a bit different, but you should probably use the again, yeah, You yeah. should. I think that's so fun. We'll take part. Love that. <laughs> right, so we're just going to add a couple so of pretty. flourishes. Not too much. That looks think? nice. Do you think that's good? Yeah. This is still Rush. make it pop, right? Yes. Make it pop. So we're going to add some strawberries, and then we're going to finish with some figs and radishes, and then we're done. Gorgeous. We love the figs. Anything you hate on the board, what do you actively avoid? Oh, nothing. Yes. <laughs> no, no, I think we do. Yeah. When people ask us to add like a sausage roll or a scotch no, egg, it's a bit upsetting. No, no, a bit brown. Or a pork pie. Okay. Um, or a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. They say, like, can we have some sandwiches in with oh, the cheese? No. They do. Um, so we try and keep it really kind fresh. of fresh okay. and luxe and very on brand. Um, but oh, yeah, oh, things like bagels work, yeah. we can kind of add on. We do like bagel platters. Yeah. So we can add a little fig there and maybe just one over here. Oh, I love that. Love it. Look a little at this bit of plate. radish. So you can see here, it's kind of building up. Yeah. But we're kind of one or two and then we'll, one or two, a bit more and then we'll, we'll be done. Amazing. And there we are. And <gasps> final step is show it off. So, so this is the point, it's just the fun bit. So it is. Take yeah, a picture, a bird's eye view, picture for the gram. And then just show it off to your friends and family and enjoy. I mean, it looks absolutely <laughs> amazing. And thank you for showing us because, you know, oh. obviously you guys have got a business to run. So thank you for, for oh, letting us get it at home. Us. You are more than welcome. Thank you so much. Oh my thank gosh. You. I'm so, <laughs> stupid COVID and we can't lay into it. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you both uh, so much. Do check out Toria and Catherine at grapeandfig.com or on Instagram at grapeandfig. Next up, it's been a while since Lou and I did an unboxing, so we thought it was about time we show you some of our favourite new high street pieces in the flesh. So here are our current picks from And Other Stories. Stories is one of the best on the British high street and they are nailing summer style right now. So Charlotte and I are going to do an unboxing. We've both done an edit of our favourite pieces available online right now and we are going to reveal them to each other and to you guys now. Do you want to start? I'll go first. Big boxes today. Very big. Um, I've actually tried on the dress version of this Cute. on the show when we did our ASOS dresses edit a few weeks ago. Um, I just love this because I really struggle with summer tops. Yeah. And this is so lightweight, so airy, and will look so good with high-waisted denim. And that ruching detail is everywhere right now. It's kind of got that sort of French girl, milkmaid, love that vibe. Super cute. Okay, I have picked out this linen blazer. I, I know people probably aren't 
purchasing tailoring right now um, because it's generally more for like events or kind of dressing up in office but I love this as a kind of an extra layer. I also think it's a real mistake to not be buying tailoring now. Same with evening wear, same with swimwear. Even if there are things that you think you're not going to be able to wear now yeah. because summer's a bit of a write-off, it doesn't mean that if you see something great that you'll wear for summers to come, you shouldn't just go ahead and buy it. No, now. completely. You know, if you find something you like, you're so yeah. right, buy it now. Also, this would be great in even like in September, in early spring. Mm -hmm. It's just really nice to see a blazer that's not a wool fabric. So, and obviously in that light colorway, it's so easy to layer. Oh, now this oh. I'm excited about. Look at the color. That is so you. I know. I mean, I'm still not over satin slip skirts. Yeah. I think at this point, like everybody must have one in their wardrobe yeah. because they were such a thing last year. Um, but they are so useful. Yeah. I mean, the color is yeah, everything. It's gorgeous. Isn't it? It's kind of that like sherbet candy pink. Totally. Like so summery, but also imagine that with like a big cream jumper. Yeah, amazing. White boots. I or just it. like a linen tee as well. Yeah. I think you could dress that in just kind of so many styles. Even though it's a pretty pink skirt, you could definitely make that like a super feminine cute look or kind of make it a little bit like cool. Completely agree. I love stories. So yeah. good. So I think you actually have these. Oh, I have the two years ago version the of versions. those, yeah. They're so the best shorts. I have been after a pair of linen shorts forever. I just think they are so useful. Obviously denim are amazing, but if you want something maybe a little bit chicer, a little bit smarter, a little bit more grown up, then linen is perfect. They are so useful. I will literally never get rid of them. And I love the shape of them as well. They're a little bit wide around the bottom, so it kind of gives it that sort of skirt look, which is way more flattering on your legs as well. Um, I just think so useful. I also think there's the kind of category of like slightly more high-end high street stores, yeah. of which Stories is included. Yes. You know, like your Arquettes, your Massimo Duties, and your Stories that do linen yeah. so well. I've got a bit of summer knitwear now. Um, this is... Oh, pretty. How cute is this? Um, I feel like with stories, you can go two ways. You can go for their kind of crisp tailoring options, yeah. which obviously you've gone for, and then you can go for like the hyper-feminine yeah. um, kind of frilly bits, which obviously I've gone for. Um, and they do the best knitwear. I, like, I would nearly go as far as to say the best knitwear on the high street. Yeah. Um, and they've done these really cute short sleeve cardies um, for the last couple of months. And I just love yeah. this version. Summer knitwear, again, is kind of rocky territory you need to it needs to be lightweight enough to um you know kind of work at this time of year and this really does that yeah and i also think a cardigan is the choice for your summer knitwear because you know if you're spending money on beautiful dresses and blouses you don't want to then cover them up totally. with like a big jumper you know when you're having like picnics in the park or you know like dinner parties in the in the evening then it's really nice to just take a little layer put it over your shoulder and you've got that sort of pretty feminine detail which is not going to ruin your look but actually enhance your look totally agree so you know if you've got things like slip dresses slip skirts all yeah. of those things these this is just the perfect layering piece rather than taking like your hoodie to the park yeah so much nicer exactly and also great you can totally wear that you know september october yeah. um when autumn fashion is coming back in it's, exactly it's not a summer only piece totally agree nice with like a black skirt and black boots yeah gorgeous mm, love Okay, so I feel like you might have seen this a lot well, on Instagram. Well, I didn't pick this because I knew you would. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, I am obsessed with this dress. Pretty much in summer is really when I tend to wear black. I don't really wear it in autumn, winter, mm. but summer, I just think it looks so much chicer. Um, and I just am obsessed with the shape of this. It's got those kind of big puffy sleeves. It's got that ruching at the back and it's got a slit in the front. Um, so many influencers I've seen wearing this and it just looks so expensive. Just, again, it's 100% linen mm. and I think that looks so expensive. I think linen is a really good fabric to buy on the high street um, because it kind of gives you that designer look yeah. as well. Yeah, you don't need to spend a fortune on linen no. and it does, it looks so expensive. Love that. So I'm going to be greedy and take two goes now because okay. I have two cream jackets um, that are really different from one another. So first up is this Ooh, jacket. Oh, love that. I love, it's amazing. It's really cool and oversized. Yeah. I, I actually think that stories year round do the best jackets. 100%. In the UK, we need summer jackets. Um, and again, this is an alternative. We we're talking about how useful a cardigan can yeah. be. Um, but this is um, a slightly more covered up alternative if you're after something yeah. a bit more kind of androgynous. Okay, and then the second cream jacket, um, actually it's white. Um, so obviously you went for the linen blazer. Yeah. I went for more of a year round option. It's mm -hmm. really heavy, this. Yeah, Why is it sit. hurting my arms to hold it up? <laughs> a white blazer is so chic year round. I love this look with like a pair of black tailored trousers, yeah. some mules. Um, for evening kind of in winter wear it for weddings over your dresses whatever yeah. but actually um, also so useful with, with denim and, and anything else at this time of year too yeah and like some split hem leggings some yeah. trappy sandals that, you're right that's such a classic piece um, which stories are so good at yeah, they really are. <laughs> it turns out they're good at a lot of stuff they are yeah. 
bit excited about this oh, yes. one, actually. I forgot about this. Uh, How yeah. pretty is this jumpsuit? Um, I, I think often jumpsuits can be a little bit more androgynous, but I think in summer there are so many pretty feminine ones. Again, it's the sleeve. I love this cross with a little tie here. Gorgeous, light, lightweight linen fabric. I just think that's so pretty. You're right. It's getting harder and harder to find jumpsuits that aren't boiler suit style. Yeah. Um, and so it's so nice to see that stories are still kind of ticking that feminine box. I'm really excited to try that on. Oh, and it's got pockets. Well, there you go. Love. So pretty. So pretty. Okay, a pair of shoes <gasps> Ooh, from me now. Pretty. How nice are these? So you and I were actually talking about heels, yeah. strappy heels yesterday, because we were saying that both of us kind of have a strappy heel deficit in our yeah. wardrobes because they weren't really on trend for a no. while. They've been gone for ages, um, but they are very much back like your kind of classic <gasps> heeled shoe. Oh my God, I'm obsessed oh, with them. Aren't they amazing? I obviously love that you can have this really pretty bow detail around your ankle, um, but then what makes it so fresh and modern is yeah. the square toe. I'm obsessed with them. I also love that they're a nude color. Mm -hmm. I think like obviously white shoes have kind of they very much had their moment I think they always will a black shoe can really dominate your outfit so I feel like a nude is just going to be a little bit more all-encompassing agreed perfect love them following the shoe theme I found Ooh. these how much do they look like the salon yeah I mean they are pretty much a direct copy but they look so good they look really expensive they look so expensive mm. and you know I love a strappy sandal but I think it's really nice to have an evening shoe that's not um, got a heel, which still feels really elegant. Yeah, those are, you know, if you're allowed to wear sandals to your workplace, then, then you know, they are more than smart enough yeah. to wear to the office during the day. Um, but as you say, on holiday, perfect in the yeah. evening. So great. So nice. I'm gonna end on a bag. I feel like, again, you'll have this just like forever because it's such a good holiday bag. I also feel like the shape is really cool. Like if that was kind of half the size or a little bit deeper, it would be classic. But I think the length of it makes it just feel a little bit more different. I completely agree. It's, it's got a kind of um, bum bag. Completely. Feel to it, but like in a cool way. Oh, I love that. Yeah. It looks like something you'd pick up on holiday. Literally. In Anitha, very like unique, no one else is going to have it. 100%. People will think you bought this in some like, yeah, cool market somewhere. Yeah. But you What's didn't. inside? Has it got a zip or is it just a flap? Let's have a look. Just a flap. Okay. But it's a nice linen lining as well. And so it's got a magnet, so that's okay. It's got a magnet. I actually think I'm going to have to buy that. Fun. Great bag. Love that. And then with the bag, Ooh. a little bit larger. Rather large. Um, I thought this was just such a great summer tote bag. It is so roomy on the inside. It has got a little zip inside. But if you are going to the park, if you're popping to the office and you need to take all your essentials, I think that's such a nice summer bag. That, that is also the ultimate travel bag. Yeah. Like the, the, going through an airport would just be made so much easier. You could actually go away for the weekend with just that bag. Yeah, completely. If you I think yeah. you, you, know, you could put your laptop in there, magazines, yeah. hand luggage. Oh, I'm thinking weekend break, bikini, so makeup, cheap, right? iPad, go. Yeah. I love that. Great find. I would never have looked at that. Yeah. I think we have just proven that Stories is the best on the high street for summer style right now. I actually wasn't feeling, no, I wasn't like not optimistic about this, but this has made me, I've been genuinely really convinced of all the pieces that we've picked out. That's a sign of a good haul, isn't it? Thank you so much to everyone who was on today's show. As usual, all the product mentioned will be linked in the show notes below. I'll be back on Tuesday with the amazing Lucy Barlow, who'll be showing us how to decorate with colour and makeup artist Adiola Boyega will be here to tell us how to get our glow on. Plus, Adam Bayat is back with his second instalment of his barbecue series. Until then, please do comment below with anything else you'd like to see on the show. From fashion to beauty, interiors to wellness, we're listening to your ideas, so please keep them coming. Don't forget to also thumbs up, subscribe and tell your friends. Bye-bye.